Shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. Greetings, Umchappers. And I'm the captain. Congratulations on being one of the first viewers to witness a video featuring the Wazacraft amplifier from Boss. Well, what is this Wazacraft thing? Is it one of the best guitar amplifiers ever invented, or is it a total vanity project Did you call by it a, Boss? An ampler. I don't know what I called it. <laughs> We're going to find out, guitar amplifiers. So, what should we get out of the way first? Should we drop the bombshell about how much it is, just to literally just go boom? Well, yes, it is at least two thousand imperial crowns yes, of the realm, and maybe about, a bit more. It's about twenty-two hundred pounds for the head, uh, and about twelve or thirteen hundred pounds for the four twelve, which is crazy. And I guess about half, that's probably about 800 quid for the 212, he says, guessing wildly. So there you go, if you can't um, afford to spend 2000 900 for the 212. Yeah, if you can't um, afford to spend that kind of money on that, probably this isn't the answer for you. Yeah, so really, I guess the question here is, if you had, you know, three and a half thousand pounds or something like that to go and spend on your rig, how does the Wazza um, sort of stack up? And, you know, or is it really just Boss kind of going, do you know what? We don't necessarily think we're going to sell loads of these, but... Uh, you know, here's what we can do if we throw all of our kind well, of R&D amazingness at it. Let's find out. I'll tell you what we do know. What do we know? We do know that it's made by Boss. <laughs> Boss, as we all know in this industry, make indestructible products. Probably, yes. Um, just this is just hypothetical talking, but probably the space shuttle is manufactured from Boss panels, it is, it is. compacted it is a, and uh, layered on the surface to make is. sure that if it's struck by anything, thousands of Boss flanges flying around the world. Meteorites are actually afraid space station. of the ISS because they're worried that Tim Peak is secretly a Boss rep. Yes. Um, um, and people that work on this, like Kazuke and Yoshi, all these guys, yes. they know their craft, they know their Wazza craft, and they, they're not going to let us down. Let's talk about what the amplifier is. So it's not a valve amplifier. That was my first question, basically. Is it? Is it a valve amplifier? No. The old philistine in me. It's not. It's a modelling amplifier, but it's not. It's a new age of modelling amplifiers, isn't it? It's not the sort of thing where you hear an end product and somebody sits and tries to code how do you make that end product. It's where componently every element of a tube amp circuit is analysed understood what does it do as different voltages go through it, what does it do when it's driven hard, what does it do when it's driven softly, uh, and digitally tries to create that So it's part. physical digital rather than just a program? <laughs> it's physical digital, uh, tubulant, digital emulant, tubulant. Yes. It's a special technology. It's just, a, it's, it's the digital amplifier, but it's kind <laughs> of just a new, you know, <clears throat> it's not the same sort of technology that was used five or, you know, years ago. Yeah. It takes a bit of fiddling. But if you have an ear and you know the sound that you want to achieve, you can get some really, yeah. really good sounds.
We had this at the NAB show, didn't we? We did. Now, yeah. I, I kind of quite like the fact that it's super simple to use. It's not a complicated amp. So it's, it's not... Um, uh, it's not banks and banks of parameters. It, it doesn't, the, you know, you, there's no 15 different parameters about sag and no, bias. You're not going to get option stuff. paralysis. You basically, you kind of do three or four basic things to get a sound. First of all, put the lead in here. You put the lead in there. Then you turn the power on. Yeah. Make sure it's connected to a speaker. And then, and then you, then you get as many women as um, you can in the same room and hit an A chord. So, there are basically there is an internal amp circuit up here where it says amplifier, it's like a preset sound that's going to give you a clean crunch lead one and lead two setting. The clever cool thing here, if you're familiar with um, the blues cubes that Roland invented, and, and uh, what was the one before the blues cube? The, the, the anyway, the whatever. Cube. No, not the cube. The, the ones they they invented after that. They all have these plug-in tone capsules, which look like little baby valves. In fact, here's a picture of us putting the Steve Vai one in earlier. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they uh, essentially give you a revoiced, a new amplifier. So you've got three, you've got, sorry, two settings. You see these little two blue eyes? They're actually where the tone capsules go. Uh, we've got the-, the Those are actually souls. So that's Steve's, part of Steve's soul is in that hole there. I'm not sure whose soul is in there. Probably Eddie's. Probably Eddie's soul, yeah. Yeah. We just, that's just, you know, we're making that up. Yeah. But it, I mean, it really could be. So, so amp A is the Wazza Brown, and amp B <laughs> is the Wazza um, Steve Vai. Yes. So each time you select that, the kind of the whole characteristic of the amplifier changes. <laughs> After that, it's really simple. You've got, you know, clean and a crunch with a shared EQ here. It's laid out a little bit like a JVM would be, isn't it? Yeah. You've got the four channels, you've got a shared EQ, you've yep. got lots of gain on tap, lots of volume um, on tap. Nothing's programmable. You know, it's not, it's where the dials are is the sound that you're going to yeah. get. You've got three uh, cabinet resonance. Con um, we are preferring voicings at the moment. Yeah, we actually used a different one depending on which uh, of the amp models we were using. Power control, this is clever. This is again taken uh, something that they've worked on for many years now. So it's not just, you know, do I want the amp loud or do I want it quiet? It's very much, do I want the amp to react like a one watt amp, react like a 50 watt, react like a 100 watt, or react like a max? A max watt, a max which is 150 watt, we have it reassuringly. Um, max power. Two effects loops. Um, we've actually just, because we can, we've got the chorus going through one effects loop and the delay above going through another effects loop. This is the pedal that comes with it. Oh, this is the pedal that comes with it. Um, so you can see you can switch the effects loops off independently or have them both on, and then you just choose which of your four settings you want. Uh, on the back of the um, pedal are, are two expression pedal inputs, one to do um, a, like a preamp volume, so if, instead of turning your guitar up and down, you can do that from a foot switch, or one to do the actual master volume. <laughs> Now, it might look like something out of Independence Day, the movie, but unlike the movie, which is the worst pile of crap <laughs> I've ever seen in my entire the life. The second movie. Oh, the first the, one's good. The first one is great because Will Smith is in it and he's, yes. great, he's great. The second movie is the worst one I've ever seen in my entire life, bar none. Please don't watch the film. This amp is stellar and it gives you some great tones and it's really reactive to your guitar. So, for example, if I'm on a lead two and I just put a little tiny bit of my end in.
it's, it does things in accordance to the volume, the way you'd expect a valve to do so. And also, in that sort of same familiar vein, if you You've got have a familiar volume, vein, have you? I have a familiar vein. Excellent. If you, here we go. If you, <laughs> if you have the volume not kind of dialed in a lot, it's not going to react the way that you'd expect a valve to sort of sag and get the valve yeah. good. But if you've got a lot of the valve, uh, a lot of the volume in, uh, as in the power amp, you're going to get a kind of warm, saturated kind of power amp tone. Yeah. As you guys all know, I'm you know I'm I'm a, I'm a terrible philistine when it comes to sort of technology, and I think every you know everything has its place. You'd rather it's made um, out of stone and and like animal skin. Well, I I so I'm loving. I, I kind of see this. Well, I kind of see this as an amplifier that isn't going to appeal to the guy that just wants a tube amplifier. Uh, it's really not aimed at that. I think it's a crossover amp. I think it's aimed for a guy that probably quite likes the idea of, he sees the benefits of gigging with a Kemper or something like that. Um, I, and that leads me to the point, you know, you will have heard hopefully through this, this video and you'll continue to hear the DI output. <laughs> DI output basically has three preset modes. Um, an output, the record output, which you just put into a DAW, which is a relatively flat response, and then obviously within your DAW, you would EQ it to get the sound that you like. Uh, the live sound, which has a little bit more to it, a little bit more sort of character to it, and that's the feed you'd give to the sound man if you were just gigging and uh -huh. sort of more replication. Or well, there's a blend of the two. Mm. So I, the, the reason I'm kind of going back to that is it's kind of, it's got the familiarity of a guitar amplifier with a lot of the, you know, let's be honest with you, nowadays these kind of amplifiers, they're so bloody close to, uh, you know, how a valve amp sounds. It's, you know, we're just talking about that, that, that little bit of something that valve mm. amps still do that's magical. Um, but it's also got that kind of Kemper, um, uh, just unbelievable ease of use, where you just turn up to a gig, you give a sound man a feed, you know the amp's going to work, you know your valves aren't going to die halfway through, you know it's going to sound the same whether you're playing in, you know, the one side of the world or the other, big club, small club, stadium, whatever. Um, well, the thing is, why make an amplifier that isn't valve? Because you want the reliability. And you know what, if you are one of these people that's built yourself a bunker in your garden to survive the probably impending nuclear holocaust that will see the world after this European vote, probably this would survive anything. You could probably manufacture water on it. You could probably uh, have a whole. <laughs> I think. Help I think, me with this parody. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I think Rob's perhaps over-egging slightly uh, quite how useful this would be in the event of a nuclear apocalypse. This would survive anything. Uh, but it would certainly allow you to get some fairly good loud guitar tones, provided that yeah. the national grid still worked. Oh, that's true. Nuclear apocalypse. You would need a solar panel system work to batteries. generate your electricity. Um, or. Uh, you could probably farm lightning, which would be good. But basically, this would never die. Never die. I don't reckon there, it would die. There are, again, so we've talked about the amplifier a little bit, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll do some more playing, or there's more playing coming. The speaker cabinets are uber robust. 
you know, proper marine ply kind of cabinets here uh, with speakers that again, uh, Roland of, uh, you know, Roland and Boss are the same company, right? Just checking, well, kind of the same company, same company, but Boss is the sort of the guitar specialist bit of it. Um, they went and bought a whole bunch of 60s speakers, you know, and tested them over and over and over again to sort of try and find out what is it about these sort of very broken in old kind of vintage speakers that, that add so much character to the sort of sounds that we're familiar with from you know, the 60s and the 70s. And they've tried to essentially manufacture their own speakers that respond like those. So a big part of the cost, probably the predominant part of the cost in the speaker cabinets here is this again, uh, ridiculous attention to detail to try and get these speakers to, to be how they want them to be. I, I must admit, I'm, I'm quite interested to maybe even just put a regular guitar amp on yeah. this and see what the speaker cap sounds like, which we may do. The story was a lot more believable than mine about Kwasuke going back in time to get some actual speakers and then reconstruct them, which was just a, a fallacy. Well, we're not allowed to say that because, of course, if people it. find out that Kwasuke is actually a time lord, he'll yes. be arrested and experimented on Kosuke, for the rest of his life. time lord. So, Obviously he isn't, he's just a normal human being. Yeah. Time Lord. Um, what I really like is the fanaticism to incredible tone and, yeah. and sort of, you know, paying respect to history. And they've got the classic layout, great sounds, clean crunches, mega gains, and they're working with some really cool artists. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, and you, you, so you're hearing the 412 mic'd up. We've actually got both the cabs plugged in in here. Uh, and I'm really excited actually to hear, I haven't heard yet what the recorded output sounds like. Um, so that's always a. It'll know, sound like widdly diddly squeal, widdly diddly squeal. Probably. While I'm playing. Probably. <laughs> widdly diddly squeal. Um, I don't know. Let's, okay, let's take you through the power controls because we haven't really done that yet. So I'm not sure how many of you would spend £3,000 to get a 1 watt amplifier, but there might be some of you there. So this one is like in 1 watt mode. Gun it. Oh, wow. One more. Let me see. What... Sounds great. Loudest one more amplifier we've <coughs> ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> That's almost all the gain now coming from the power amp section. So I've got the, the actual oh, gain on the channel. We'll put a little bit down. of the gain in then. <laughs> Okay, that's loud. Uh, then there's a 50 watt mode, which is what you've heard the bulk of our demo in. Um, it seemed to be, it seemed to allow us to get like a 
good level in the room yeah. with some dynamics as well. So he's. <laughs> We better check that we're being massaged to the live. Yes. That that's an Are you volume. keeping an eye on this, Beazle? Crikey, that's loud. And then in max mode. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus. Hold on, let me just position my ear away. <laughs> That's the best sound that it makes. Um, it needs the volume to give it that kind of feel. It does. <clears throat> through, through these speaker cabinets, I think it, you've got to get some welly out, out of this amplifier. Can um, we just play with that, that volume setting again, just a little bit more? Is that all right? Well. But just cover your ears because it needs, uh, it needs a bit of that love. <laughs> Wicked, mate. Sugar. That's really nice. Really, really nice. So, because it's just enough saturation with yeah. the body around it. And this is, to be honest with you, this is actually where I think they've really nailed the kind of the valve amp uh, similarity. In that, you know, all the really great <coughs> drum sounds, in my experience, that you've heard, sounds that you probably think have mm. got way more gain in it than they actually have, are not that much gain, but really. Freaking loud. Basically. And also, these vintage type speakers are designed to be pushed yeah. really loud. Um, because they were made back in the day with no PA. Yeah. They were made back in the day back with in the no, day, PA. no PA. Um, so, if we take a look at the back as well in a minute, you'll see it's got uh, loads and loads of IO. Um, it's got a USB uh, where you can use an editor for it or um, uh, you can USB record out if you want. We're using the dedicated DI output, not the USB record output. Uh, it has MIDI, uh, so again, that's kind of where I'm going back to this. This sort of, you know, is it a crossover amp? I think it's not. You know, it's not your, um, it's not the guy that's going to go and drop two thousand quid on a Friedman Plexi mm. kind of copy. Uh, it's not the guy that's going to go and buy an Axe FX or a Kemper and literally wants to sit and do fifty thousand different editing menu things. Yeah, yeah. It's the guy that kind of sits in between those. Yeah. I think, in my opinion. It's, it's the guy Can I give my opinion? Go on then, please give your opinion. Because I'm an honest person. Yes. It sounds really, really, really good. I think the the faffing around with the extra tones thing is a little bit gimmicky. Do you think so? Yeah, the I think so. Thing? I think the best sounds from this amplifier are actually the built-in sounds that you really? get. Yeah, I think they're yeah. really, genuinely, I think they're really, really good. I wouldn't be bothered to do that. But I think what they've got here is the basis for something really yeah. special. And I think if they can bring out keep the line going, keep it going, yeah. because Boss is such a great brand, yeah. and get the price a little bit lower and a little bit simpler, I think you've got something that's really going to stay. I'd be, I would be staggered if this isn't 
just that this is this will just be the king of a range of oh, that's what that's what I'm become, that's what I'm uh, hoping. I didn't find that the, the, the whole. I mean, oh, you get, no, I think it's, you get I the think, brown one with it anyway, so that comes. Pre- you know, I'm just saying. Loaded. I think it's a cool thing to do, but yeah. I just I just wouldn't be bothered to do it. You know, I just I want I out. There's just you just plug in. it and you'd never touch it again. All I want is a 50 watt version of that with none of the extra bits. Because I'm just a simple guy. I mean, bearing in mind, I use a little tiny one-channel yeah. amplifier. Yeah. And that's it. I, I like yeah. the simplicity. Yeah. And I think they've almost, for, for, for yeah. me as an individual artist, yeah. got that. Um, and that's, I'm excited to see where that's it That's why I was saying that I think, you know, you, you personally, you'd be in the camp of just, can I just have the, the basic one-channel? Yeah. You know, you'd spend the money on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I'm not saying that you wouldn't spend the money. But, yeah. you, but you know, and, but as I said, I, I can see more and more artists now who are... Um, electing to go down the Kemper route, yeah. or, or you know, I, when I say Kemper, I'm kind of using that as the sort of the, the generic, the generic term for that term kind for, of for the genre. guy that perhaps has given up on guitar amps. People that want to turn to um, a gig with a USB stick, yeah, thinking that's going to get them laid. Uh, <laughs> it probably does, in yeah. fairness. Um, so uh, no, I, I, you know what? I love the one watt. I love the I love the Max. Uh, yeah, oh, actually, I love all the sounds inside. Yeah, you know what? If you're sounds. a shredder and a, and a rock dude, and you love all those kind of really yeah. sick yeah. high gain tones, you're gonna absolutely cream mm. it over this. I really like I really like the Steve Vai tones. I thought the Steve Vai no, was I like, more modern. Look, let me put this out there. I'm a massive Steve Vai yeah. fan. I went to see him on his birthday when he played in Brighton. It was an emotional experience for me. I love everything about the guy. I think yeah. I think his sounds are great. I yeah. just think that having that feature in an amp, it's just a little bit. I don't know. For me, it's just a little bit like that. But I love the amp, I love the sounds. Yeah, well, that's, I'd have one. You know, I mean, I'd absolutely have one. I, I think it's a cool. With boss of feeling generous. You know, the, I, I don't know. Um, you know, on the blues cubes, obviously you've got things like the um, Robin Ford tone capsule yeah. and the Eric Johnson tone capsule. Yeah. You know, and they're kind of they're cool because it. You, you know, I think a lot of guitar players they buy an amplifier and a year down the line they'll change the amp or they'll change some integral part of their setup because yeah. they're just they need new tones to be inspired. And obviously the beauty with tone capsules is, you know, is you can literally go, well, there's no need to change the amplifier mm. now. You can plug in different tone capsules. It okay, last, last points of view things. from me. Um, it doesn't sound like a Boss pedal. Definitely, it doesn't sound like a 49 pound Boss overdrive pedal. It's the best sounding Boss Roland high gain amplifier I've ever heard. It is great and you really need to check one out. Yeah. And when you do, make sure that you use a great guitar and a great plectrum and it's all freshly strung and you're feeling good and you had a coffee and some burgers or something or whatever rocks your boat. And go to lead two, and don't use too much gain because there's yes. a load of gain on tap. And make sure you put enough volume in, and yeah. you'll be really pleasantly surprised. Yeah, you know, I speaks the truth. You know, or you know, just grab yourself a. Well, I, you know, I think Rob's probably right. There's a certain player that's going to buy this, and it's not the guy. Well, that's, I don't. You know, I mean, he's beaten up old strap. People buy what they want to buy because it's yeah. whatever makes you feel good. But I don't think this is going to attract the. Lawyers that want to play blues. No. I think this is a rock metal. It's a rock amp. Amp. It? You know yeah. what? And it does a really good job of doing that. It certainly does. I've been Rob Chapman. I've been the captain. See you there. <laughs>